lot of things that no doubt you've looked at, I've looked at. We just wonder why, Lord, why? And then if we never know on this side of heaven, and we keep our trust in the Lord, when we get over on the other side, it won't matter anyway. I say amen. 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 I've heard people say, when I get to heaven, I'm going to ask Jesus this about that, and I'm going to ask Apostle Paul why he wrote this. When I get to heaven, it won't matter. Amen. Amen. It won't matter. Amen. I appreciate the Lord. I've been listening to these testimonies, Brother Yule's testimony here, and what Sister Kathy said, and, and uh, you know, if you've ever preached and then you wonder if you are on track or not. And then you listen to testimonies and you realize that the Lord does have something in mind for us. All right. Now, I, I like it when the Spirit gives the move and, yep. you know, you feel conviction, you can feel yep. the pull to the altar. I like that, don't you? I do. Yeah. I like it when we can sing a song and we can break out to dance and shout and glorify God. Yep. And then if we don't, and I have to preach, I like it when I get anointed to. Amen. 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 Praise God. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 20. Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. And James chapter 5, verse 17. Just two verses. Ephesians 3 and 20. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. And then James chapter 5 verse 17. Now Elijah was a man subject to like passions as we are. And he prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. Thank you for standing for the reading of the word. Now, when we're going through problems and you're dealing with situations in your life, and you don't understand. And you don't you, you can't figure out the puzzle. You can't put it together. I don't like puzzles. <laughs> Kathy likes puzzles. Brother Bill likes to work those puzzles. I don't have patience for that. <laughs> Sister Esther, somebody gave her one and she put it together on the dining room table. And she got the whole thing together, and there was one piece missing. Now, I'm sure that disappointed her, but it would have devastated me if I'd have done it. I just don't like puzzles. And so when we get into situations in life and we can't figure it out, then we don't understand it. Right. I remember whenever, I, I'll get to where I'm going to preach it here in a few minutes. I remember when I was working in a factory and I started to work there and I wasn't even old enough to be there. Kids can do a lot of things and I wasn't old enough to even be there and I fudged my way in and I just not nice way of saying, you know where I'm coming from. I fudged my way in and got myself in the factory and uh, uh, I didn't want to go to the department that they wanted, that they wanted to put me in but I'd heard a lot of bad things out there, and if I had them, I wouldn't have stayed, to be honest with you. But one of my buddies said, come on up here with me, us. We need some help. And I said, but the thing here said I need to go back there. He said, come on, they'll never miss you. And don't you know they never? <laughs> and I worked there six or eight months before they ever figured out I shouldn't even been there. But that time, that time, uh, 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 I, re I, I began to see things from a different perspective. All the way back from where I was working, from where I was working, all the way back to the shipping department, the warehouse, you know, uh, uh, up where I worked, 
They got raw materials in in barrels, 55 gallon drums, and uh, steel and all these things in. It had to be processed. It had to be put through, you know, it had to have holes punched in the steel, some of it bent, some of it welded. And then it all had to be assembled together, put on a line and run down through a paint booth and had to be baked on, come out on the other end and uh, 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 packaged, put on a forklift and hauled back to the warehouse, put on a truck. By the time I left there in 19 years, I had worked from one end of that place to the other. Right. And about two weeks, I went to the other department where I was supposed to have went, and I said, boy, I'm going back. Amen. But well, the, the thing about it is, I saw the whole process before we ever got a finished product. Yeah. Right. Are you helping me here? Amen. Before that product was even uh, uh, made, up, made up and put in the warehouse, right. there were orders for it. Yep. And I'm going to tell you, there's orders for your life. Amen. Amen. Orders for your life. Where you put your footsteps down, amen. Where you make a footprint in the sand, there's an order for that. Amen. Amen. God's got an order for you. He's got an order for me. Amen. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20. You know, we look at the first part of that. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly uh, exceeding abundantly above all that we ask and think. My, what a God. Yep. Amen. But look at the last part of that. According to the power that worketh in us. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. <clears throat> According to the power that worketh in us. We pay a little attention to that. Worketh. That effectual fervent to be mighty. Now the scripture said that Elijah was a man of like passions as we are. Amen. And uh, he went on to talk about the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous. Amen. But we, you know, we want to we wanna be all those things. We want to be effectual. We want to be fervent. But we don't want to take time for the Lord to work through us. Are you helping me preach? Amen. To work through us as the pattern begins to unfold for our life. And what about that preparation that we got to go through while God's working on us? Amen. Amen. We read about Elijah and we read about him on Mount Carmel and pulling the fire down from heaven whenever he has a 65 word prayer, if I'm not mistaken. And my, what a man of God. Amen. But when he comes on the scene, in 1 Kings chapter 17, he's already a full-grown man. He's already a prophet. We don't have anything about his childhood. Nope. He just simply comes on the scene, and he walks up to Ahab, and he tells him because of the sin and the idolatry, God's going to bring a drought. Right. And then there comes a trying time for Elijah. Amen. God tells him to go down to the brook of Cherith, be fed by the ravens. And we've talked about all these things. And I'm not going to go into all the detail tonight. Amen. But Elijah knew that a raven was a not a clean bird. Don't tell where he got the meat. But when he brought it to him, he ate it. And then, you know, then he, and, and he's there by the uh, by that uh, 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 brook. The drought comes on and the brook dries up. But God, I thought I was where you wanted me to be. You listen to me because you know I've preached on some of this before. Bear with me. I thought I was right where you told me to be. And now the water's drying up. But God spoke, speaks to him again, tells him to go down to Zarephath. There'll be a widow there that will sustain him. Right. And when he gets there, she's poor. Brother Ralph says sometimes, poor as old Job's turkey. That's what he said, you know, whenever he grew up, they didn't have a lot, we didn't either. And he said, preacher, sometimes I think we grew up as poor as old Job's turkey. 
And I'm sure, I'm sure that woman probably felt that way. Because when Elijah said, would you bake me a cake? She said, I've just got enough here for the last one. And I'm going to bake it. My son and I are going to eat it. We're going to die. Right. Bake me one first. And she does that. And when she does, every time she ever went back to that meal barrel, there was enough there for another meal. Amen. And then on top of that, her son gets sick and dies, and Elijah raises him from the dead right. by the power of God. Yeah. And I went through all of that. You know what? God was taking him through these things. He was getting ready for the Mount Carmel experience. Right. And let's don't give up on God when we're being tested and we're being tried and the fire is right in our face and we feel like we cannot handle one more step. Amen. Let's remember the Mount Carmel experience coming your way. Well, I'm beginning to feel the glory of God here today. Hallelujah. There's one coming to you. There's one coming to me. Amen. It might not be exactly like Elijah experienced. Amen. I may never experience nothing like that. I may never experience God striking me down and me not being able to see for the blindness of the light. Amen. My God, I wouldn't care if I never saw another day in my life. Amen. To be that close to the presence of God. You might say, preacher, are you out of your mind? I'm talking about being that close to the presence of God. Amen. I may never be there. But that experience being close to God is coming to you. If you let God lead you where he wants you to go. Yeah. Hallelujah. Now, I, I, I'm just like everybody else. I know now after I've got older, Brother Bill, that I'm not the preacher that I thought I was whenever I first started to preach. You learn a few things. My goodness, when I first got called to preach, I thought I was the only one who was called. I was the only one knew anything. Amen. But by the time the Lord got through pulling me here and pulling me there and straightening me up, I realized, hey amen, just because I was called to preach didn't mean I was a free agent. Right. Somebody helping me preach. Right. Hey amen. I had to go through some things. I had to learn a few things. Hey amen. But I don't have a whole lot of patience, hey amen, to work a puzzle. And I don't have a whole lot of patience. God's still working on me. Amen. When we run into these free agents, amen, God said this, God said this, God said that. Amen. Sometimes I pray for weeks before I hear from the voice of the Lord. Are you helping me? Amen. You might say, preacher, I'd hate to be that far away from God. It don't mean that God don't lead me. It don't mean that God doesn't direct my thoughts. It doesn't mean that God doesn't help me how to pray. But I'm talking about getting in the genuine presence of the Holy Ghost. And I'm wondering about these folks, amen, that can just, God said this, God said that. But I'm telling you, you don't have to wonder long. You can look at their life. You can watch the footsteps that they're following. And it not being ordered by the Lord. It being ordered by the things that goes through their mind. Amen. I'm telling you, if you'll follow God, amen, he'll work through you for the power that worketh in you. Amen. Well, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Elijah goes through this time of preparation before he ever goes to Mount Carmel and calls the fire down from heaven. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. I'm going to leave my text here just a moment. I think I've got time. It just now hit my mind. When God takes us somewhere, and he teaches us an experience. Let's don't forget what he done. Don't forget about it. When I'm in the low point of my life, and I'm really struggling with issues, the friends I have, and some of you have been my friend through it, It's easy for me to forget about being in a revival up in Ohio and a little woman dying right there in the service. You've heard me tell about this. Brother Steve was here. He could tell you her whole name. 
I just barely can't remember Sister Bessie. But all I know, she was just a little over four foot tall and uh, probably up in her 60s by that time. This is back in 89. And uh, she's had a heart attack and died. Just fell over. You know, it's supposed to be in a basement, but they never finished it. They went ahead and put a, a gabled roof on it, and there was a pole that held up the ceiling, and she just fell over against it, and her face just turned black as coal. Well, that's a little bit black, but I mean, it was just dark, dark. Right. Well, she had a heart attack. Right. And then they didn't have cell phones. They had to run across the street, call 911 or whatever they did to get... Uh, get them out. But by the time they got there, they had already prayed for that woman, prayed for her twice, and well, they never did stop praying. No. And when they run the gurney through the door to pick up Sister Bessie, hey, amen, the color had come back in her face, and she was on the floor dancing in the spirit. Right. Now, I know that sounds far fetched to us here this morning. But I lived there. I saw it. Sister Esther saw it. Sister Michelle was about 14 years old. She was there that night. Amen. God getting us ready for things, but let's don't forget what we saw. Right. Now, real quickly, not been too long ago I preached about Esther. I listened to getting preached on by Esther during the week. Then when I come to church, I can preach on Esther. Are you helping me here? We can look at God's preparation there, can't we? Amen. She was an orphan and raised by her cousin. Mordecai was not her daddy. If I'm not mistaken, he wasn't even her uncle. He was her cousin. And he raised her just like his own child. But to be able to get elevated to the place of being the queen over that entire country, she had to cancel out that orphan spirit. All right. Have you ever seen folks that never get over some things in their lives? Mm -hmm. yep. Always going back to this and always whining about this and always they never get past those things. And if God's going to use you with the power of the Holy Ghost in our lives, then we've got to get past some things and get over an orphan spirit. Right. Now, I've been treated bad by preachers. I've been treated, treated bad by fellowships. I've been treated bad here, and I've been treated bad there. Amen. Enough sometimes that I could just sit down and pull it up over me and forget about it. But if I want the power of God to work in me, right. amen, I've got to get over that spirit, amen, and get past it. Can somebody say amen? Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. We have to be able to see the truth that God sees about us. Right. Number two, she had to listen to godly instruction. <laughs> she was in a place where she didn't know. She was in a place where she couldn't get instruction. And you think about this. Mordecai was her cousin. But he couldn't go in there where she was at. I mean, good. I mean, it's hard for me to fathom. I mean, you know, a guy gets a wife, and then he decides that's not enough, and he gets another one, and he gets another one. And so he's got a whole harem. <laughs> then he's got people to watch these harems because anybody can't go in there. I don't care if he can't tell or not. So he has to get the word through the long way around. Don't give up whenever you're praying and you don't hear from God immediately. Right, right, right. It takes a long time for her to get a message from Mordecai. But when she, when she gets one, and then she realized, well, the one time, you know, you're going to have to step out and do something of your own. You're going to have to go see the king about this for yourself. But he hadn't called for me for 30 days. 
If you think you're going to get out of this by yourself just because of where you're at, you're joking. Yep. You're going to have to do something yourself, he tells her. Amen. She had to listen to godly instruction. Mm -hmm. Amen. She could have seen herself and just uh, uh, forgotten everybody else, but that wasn't what was to be done. Instead of playing the role of the victim, she became the king, the queen. Right. Instead of being overcome with fear, she acted with bravery. Now, I want to tell you something. You can play the role of victim so long. And you can play the sympathy role so long. And I've seen this happen so many times that they'll move up here and play the sympathy role. Then when sympathy runs out here, then they'll jump over here, and that'll be the best thing happened ever since sliced bread. Amen. And then they, they'll run out and they'll swing all the way over here, play the sympathy role here, and it's been doled out and doled out and doled out. And that's the best thing that ever happened since they invented margarine to replace butter. Amen. But after a while, that's going to play out, and they'll spin around and around and around, and there won't be anywhere else to go but to God. Right. Stop playing the victim. Amen. And raise up and be what God wants you to be, a man or a woman. Best somebody help me preach. We might make excuses for ourselves on and on and on, but God sees where we are. If you think I ain't preaching on myself a little bit, please don't ask Sister Esther. <laughs> Amen. We all have those times. Yeah. But God wants us to raise up above this victim mentality. Right. Yeah. Amen. Amen. In verse 20 again, in Ephesians chapter 3, according to the power of that worketh in us, God is able, able, able to exceedingly, exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Right. There's got to be some preparation time. Got to be some preparation time. I never seen anybody. I never seen too many. I start to say, take off and start preaching, and be absolutely effective immediately. Now I've seen one or two that was just powerful preachers, taken right off from the get go. But the problem was, whenever they stepped in a role that they wasn't prepared for, and because of their ability, and Gift, they got their heads blown way up out of proportion. And then whenever they went down for a nose dive, they backslid. Are you helping me? They wouldn't stay there for preparation. They wouldn't stay there long enough to learn. And I said it earlier, somebody come get us a song ready. Whenever I worked there at the factory, I saw all the way the product coming in and 55 gallon drums <coughs> big bundles of steel those bundles of steel have to be broke apart somebody had to have the ability and the knowledge to set up those old presses back the old fashioned way finally they got some deals that was in and they all they done was took a forklift and set them in and bolted them to the press and they was already set up we had a guy there that took those old presses the old-fashioned way and set those punches up one at a time. Yeah. Could you imagine when that press come around and it made its final up and down and that punch went down in there. If it wasn't right, it broke the punch, it broke the die setting, it broke everything. And I watched those little fellows sit there and sweat over that and it pecked and pecked and pecked. They step back and hit that pedal and down it would go. And then it'd be my turn to get up there to punch press and work on it. Work it and I managed to work it all the way through. And 
finally, when I quit there, I was a shipping foreman. It was my job to see that it was loaded on the truck, loaded properly, that whenever it got to its destination, it wouldn't jostle around and tore all to pieces. You see, there's a whole lot of work went into that. And there's a whole lot of work goes in our work with God. A whole lot of preparation. A whole lot of preparation. I'm, I'm trying to hush, but I, we we had some, you know, that company. Well, they they was tight. They was a tight company. You know, they, they wanted to, uh, the product moved through that door as soon as possible. And sometimes we had to load product on the truck that wasn't properly packaged. We had to almost package the stuff when we put it on the truck tight. And when that truck turned the curve, it wouldn't shift this way or that, because if it did, it would tear it all to pieces. Now, I'm just bragging on myself, but we had some of the sales reps that they didn't want nobody loading that stuff but me. And so I had one of my guys load it. And I told him, I said, now we're going to put this on the tail end of that trailer. And what do we do? You've got to stack it in there just like I told you. Well, he'd done it before. We did just a quick time and him in a big hurry. I walked over there and all that stuff slanted down. And he's taking a piece of wire and tied it off. And I knew he'd never get past it. And I was just a young man. I'm not making excuses for myself. But I was just a young man myself. And I walk over there and I'm frustrated. And I unties it, untie it, and I get a hold of it and I start throwing it back out on the dock. And about the time the general manager comes by, big tall guy, bow legged, knock deep, he comes by. He don't say a word, he just walks on by. Well, that fella got his little feelings hurt because I scolded him. I made him stay overtime and do it right. Cost me overtime too. I get paid for it. And when he filed a grievance, it went into third step. And he had to know that old fella, his jaw started twitching. And he said, I walked by and saw that. He said, I wouldn't have just thrown it out on the floor. I'd sent him home and he wouldn't have come back. And I'm telling you, all of that to tell you this. Aren't you glad God's patient with us? Amen. Yeah. Aren't you glad he don't just grab us and jerk us and throw us around Amen. every time we make some kind of a blunder or mistake? That he takes his time with us because he wants us to pick our feet up and set them down right where he wants them. Then we pray for the sick, we start seeing results. When we're preaching a message to reach the lost, then we'll see results. When we start pre preaching a message, amen, to help us walk closer to God, we'll start seeing results. Amen. God wants to help you today. Amen. Now, I've sat here with all types of anxiety running through my stomach before I got up to preach today. Because I said, Lord, really, is this what you want today after the service we had last week? And Sister Kathy said, what she did. But the Eagle said, what he did. And I said, all right, Lord. I'll do my best. I'd like to get all fiery and get anointed. And I haven't. But I've said what God laid on my heart to tell you today. All right. Amen. Could we stand all over the house? We're going to open up this altar for you. Let's come and let's pray. If you don't have a baptism of the Holy Ghost, then you need to be on this altar every time it's open. And if you feel yourself wandering and getting a little bit cold, this altar is open for us. We need to be here every time it's open. Come on, let's pray today. Let's seek after the place of God. If you've been praying, keep on praying. Keep on seeking God. It's not just a one-time thing, folks. It's not just a one-time thing. God's deep with your life today. Come on.